Hey guys, Tales of Taram here. We're back with another episode or side story, whatever you want to call it, of Draconia. Today is going to be a side story though, because we only have uh, three people here, and I wanted to do a uh, session oh. here late at night. Did you just meow, you motherfucker? That was my cat. <laughs> okay, guys, Yodis no. is going to die in this side session. No! no. Anyways. Not again. <laughs> Not again. It's crazy that you could say that and actually mean it. Um, <laughs> anyways. You're just so. going to bring him back again. Man, I cussed for the first 30 seconds. Uh-oh, big deal. Um, I'm going to be a whole different race. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Uh, but I'm here with, if you couldn't tell, Eotis. What? Basilius. Hello. Who's playing Moros in technicality. And Mr. Gatch. Hello. I know, I booed uh, too. Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I think Barbara says something that makes me very stupid. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, this is what how the... it is when I'm try when I'm not recording everyone, just so you guys are aware. Um anyways, so you guys ready to start this? Yeah, definitely. What? what? Uh, Iota's just left. Understood. Okay, now I am. Okay, just had to just had to get your pants and uh, you had to make sure your your penis wasn't showing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. 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 Yeah, because I have a webcam. Glad, on your glad, you know the, glad you know the drill. Part of the video. Anyway, gonna die. So. <laughs> hold on. Let me just fucking copy and paste this. So. What do you guys want to fucking do for this session? I have no fucking clue how I'm going to start it, man. Because I don't want to get you guys going there. Maybe a dream sequence. Uh, <laughs> any, dreams. Anybody got ideas before we start here? And yes, this is me recording still, so. Yeah, all right. Come on, guys. We can brainstorm something. You guys want to fight? So, uh, I want to fight Gesh. <laughs> That's all oh, I need, okay. Up. No. Uh, you would absolutely but, lose. Do you guys actually? Do you guys want to do a battle royale here, or do you guys want to do an actual session? I, I would get my ass beat. No, I, I, I after this. <laughs> Most would absolutely destroy. Guys, us. I'm asking a serious question I, here. I'm trying to get the video. Actual, well, actual session. Well, actual. Uh, yeah. Actual okay. session. Uh, we never specified who got what loot, huh? No, but we can decide that later with the whole group. Yeah. Yeah. The thing. Okay. Because you guys are the only ones that showed up, and he can't come in today. Okran can't. Uh, anyway, so. <clears throat> last session on Dragon Ball Z. No. Um, the party awoke in the forest after traversing into the western wilds, uh, following along the river, to make it to the ship the architect uh, provided for them on the western side of Draconia, because apparently Thomas Micah no longer exists. Uh, due to another side story that uh, I decided not to record because it got really weird. Anyways. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the party then got entranced and pulled into a hag's domain where they fought the Baba Yaga. And in one foul swoop, they fucking restrained her. <laughs> Turn one. Yeah, you guys don't understand. I have, like, an abacus here that I, like, slide anytime you guys make any minor annoyance. I, like, slide a red anytime you make, like, a... Anytime you, like, beat my boss in one turn or don't let the monologue, I slide a gold. <laughs> yeah, let me just tell you. It's pretty weighty on one side. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, I don't have one. I'm lying. Uh, but, yeah, the party defeated the hag some fucking how. They didn't, I think they did like Easy three beat. damage to her. <laughs> I, no, they didn't even do any damage to her specifically. They didn't do any damage. <laughs> they did she, no damage. And, and, Guess tried. And she beat the fuck out of them. And they still restrained her with one of the mag, like the lesser magical cursed items I had. Um, turn, turn one. Guess tried to kill himself, and then we immediately, we immediately had to be like, no, Guess don't die. Yeah, and Guess lost a legendary even... piece of armor. Uh, but it still has inventory. Didn't do computer, anything yet, yeah, and then we you, took Bo down Ross. the hag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the hack did do stuff. Anyways, but yeah, let, let's get back on track, my guys, okay? Yep, 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 yep. Um, yep, yep. the party then 
did some bullshit. Did some role play. Um, the hag tried to woo Yotis by changing her form, which <laughs> should have gave the party an awareness that she had already broken her out of her bonds because she can't take actions in those bonds. Party went through the loots, uh, freed any of the critters that were trapped, and before they were about to leave, met a light spirit that they freed called Lumia? Yeah, Lumia. Um, who thanked them and told them that uh, they should probably kill the hag, and as they started stabbing the hag, they didn't get through her defenses, and she teleported out of there. The party realizing, oh shit, that's going to be a problem in the future. Um... For Yotis. That's for future Iota story about. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> however, <laughs> do you guys want to continue from here without the party? Because I kind of don't. Let's yeah, not. I, I, yeah, I kind of feel like if we just leave now, we kind of. We'd be so, leaving yeah. Oak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could see. I, I don't. I think he's sleeping, so I'm not going to at him. You know kind of a dick move but yeah um so before then as you all slept within your camp actually i'll say no fuck it let's keep the timeline as you all approach the tree you suddenly feel a kind of floral scent come over you and you start to sleep as you all fall asleep into a deep Deep slumber. Thank you. Good. Abacus moves. Um, the opposite way. So you got a blue one moved that way. Uh, uh, but as you all find yourself succumbing to this slumber, dreams of plums and sweet berries come over you. Gingerbread houses for you, Moros. A man on a sleigh. Eotis, <gasps> for you. Fiery pits of hell. Blazing as you bring your sword of justice upon them. And for you, Gesh. Pretty dragonborn ladies. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> I want to break out of my dream and get into Gesh's dream. <laughs> so does Moros. Um, anyways, so... As you all sleep, you eventually hear... Oh, I actually have a sound for this. You eventually hear the sound of a bell ringing, hearkening you. Is that my fucking bell? Three dings awaken you all within this mist, this swirling dark world. I... Why, Why did I play jovial music for this? We're, we're, we're keeping it. We're keeping it. Really I, don't, I don't want to change it because the bot's finicky, but... I love it. Uh, it's so funny. Fuck it. I'll, I'll, look for, I'll look for something really quickly. No, no, no. I, I love the upbeat music. It's great. We're having a good dream. <laughs> I just realized. I was like, I can't focus. What's the? Why is this music playing? <laughs> Slash play. It's so hard to get into, like, a scary attitude when this music is yeah. just going. There you go. Ah, oh, damn now it. I the, now I can feel the shiver down much back. I just posted my Irish dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Moros is just, like, in his dream, just practicing Irish tap dancing. If you want, you could be in a bar. You could, you could describe your dream just in small detail if you want, but, I mean... Hey. <laughs> Anyways... As you awaken, you find yourself in a darkened valley. A black expanse surrounds you. Trees begin to pop up in your vision. A dark forest. No, a swamp. No, a plains. A mountain range valley. You're unsure. As you stare around at the ever-expanding, darkened expanse be beyond your vision, your purview, the only thing congruent are the stars in the sky that shangle and dangle. I don't know the other word I was going for, so dangle it is. That dazzles brightly, there's the word. As well as the small mist that drifts not but a foot off the ground around you. A gray color. The landscape colorless besides the mute grays, whites, and blacks that you can see. A small bit of blue on the horizon, but dark blue to give way to night. 
you find yourself in the Valley of Darkness. What are you all doing very quickly as you find I yourself look up, awakening? I look up at the stars. Wow, the stars are really dangling tonight. Oh, God. <laughs> Where are we this time? Right, so beautiful. The last, the last time I fell asleep, I woke up in a goddamn pod. Where the fuck am I? I don't know, but if I find a body of water, I'm going to push you in it. As you uh, say that, you see the forest bends just a little bit as the trees move out of your vision. A single rock in your view, and you see just beyond it the glistening of water as the starlight reflects off it, not but a few hundred yards away. Huh. Well, speak Don't of the devil dare. and he shall arise. Don't you oh. dare. <laughs> Let's go investigate! Uh, yeah. As I say that, I, I, I take off uh, towards the pond. Okay. Oh, uh, sister, give me strength. And <laughs> still fall. Okay. And guess you continue with them too? Yeah. As you all begin to make haste towards the water, you eventually come across a large, expansive lake, pond. You're unsure. It seems to stretch for miles and grows as you look towards its horizon. The mountainscape long miles in the distance. You could see now... A brift of snow, dandruffing upon the large cresting hills and spine-like protrusion mut miles away. You could see the ever concaving hillside of the large rocky enterprise in the distance. And you could see the lake oh. before you. Gentle snow drift lands and melts immediately into the water. Is the water melting things? I push Moros in. What the fuck? Moros, what's your strength? <laughs> uh, so fourteen. I'll say what I'll say. You could use acrobatics and say what's your acrobatics plus ten. Uh, plus ten to my plus acrobatics. 10? Twelve. What? Okay. Uh, Eodis, what's your athletics plus ten? Athletics seventeen. Okay. You do push him in as you're like. Oh shit! Oh. You, you realize, oh, you're next to water. He pushes you in, and you fall into this almost hot springs. Uh, this almost As, like warm hot springs water. After I push him in, I jump in after him. Okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, okay, I just won't describe the rest of the scene then. Okay, you all three oh, jump into right. the water. It's nice. Wait, hold on. I can't. Please describe it. I didn't mean to interrupt no, you. No, you jumped in already. Fuck you. I'm sorry. As you all jump in and fall down, you push yourselves underwater for but a brief second as bubbles escape through the orifices of your body. Yes, everyone. Um, oh. And as you open your eyes, you see the crystal-viewed lake. The water below your hair begins to dangle within the beautiful zero-gravityed water itself. And you all feel a sense of calm come over you, as the water's heat seems to reside within your bodies, warming you from the cool environment you hadn't noticed before. You look towards your new fem femdom friend, uh, and your newly revitalized selves, and you look around at this underwater scene as fish begin to swim by. You see this beautiful kelp that begins to emerge from the rock beneath. And you see a beautiful ecosystem. As you swear, you see just the glints of sunrise, sun rays pushing in to the lake below. Are we breathing or are we holding our breath? That's up to you. What are you doing? <laughs> As you open your mouth, talk. the water escapes. And out of fear, you immediately go up. And as you breach the surface, you realize... You weren't drowning, but as you look, you can oh, see yeah. the sun itself has a golden and purple hue that seems to eviscerate and spread across the valley. And as you look around, furred and spruce trees give way to what almost feels like a valley within a tundra or a cold environment. As you look around, you see in the distance birds beginning to wake up. You start to hear the... 
of morning birds beginning to sound their awakening tweets. Um, morning is coming to life. As you, Eotis, stay above, you see these scenes piercing. You see a rabbit jumping from the bushes, staring at you before jumping back into a few others. You see a beautiful landscape before you. And as you stare, you see in the distance, Eotis, not too far off, floating above the lake itself, in its center, its direct center, a small island about 500 feet up, I would say, with a tower and multiple fortified walls around it, chains dangle from the side, deep under the water, falling under it, and waterfalls pour off all four sides. All seem to be... Actually, you wouldn't notice that from this distance. Actually, no, because it is light. You can see just in the distance, the reflection of the waterfalls, they all seem to have a different color to them. But that's all you notice. Below, Moros. Yeah. The topography of this um, lake, like most do, seems to get deeper as it goes, but it has a... Mm. The rocks and whatnot, the life here seems to cover it, but it's almost like an unnatural, well, a natural kind of cone shape uh, directly down to the center, which means you believe something was raised from this area to create the lake. Because it doesn't seem naturally, naturally forming. You get the feeling there was mm -hmm. maybe a bluff or like a plains here. Gesh. Yes. The water feels good on your body. Almost like the water of the Eternal Glade, but it's not as sanctifying. You feel the the hum and the drum of arcane and natural magic pulsing through your body. But it's nothing as powerful as the Eternal Glade. Comes for you. Mm -hmm. I'll let you guys take we, the scene. Eotis, you're, know you're above the water, they're below. You guys you guys were just having dreams and you feel you woke up in this strange place. Got it. I'm gonna move the app. Eotis. Gesh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bad Gesh. What the... Oh, no. I'll swim away from Gesh as I see bubbles. <laughs> oh. Gesh <laughs> can't swim, he's just slowly sinking. <laughs> I'll, uh, I think Morris is going to try and investigate that, like, deeper part of the lake we're in now that she knows we can breathe. Okay. Um, you begin to yeah. head deeper towards the center of the lake. Yeah. Yes, you see female Moros begins to descend. Yotis, as you get this scene before you, do you dive back down? Do you stay up? What are you doing? Okay, I'm gonna dive back down towards uh, Moros. You see, Moros gonna... is swimming through the water away from you, almost to the point where the rays of light allow you to see them as some of them are pouring through, creating this beautiful bluish, pink, and green waterscape around you. And it's pr it's very clear. Um, however, they are probably a good 300 feet from you as you're taking in this scenery above, and you look down. Uh, you can see Gesh is directly below you looking around, too. Seemingly okay, just can taking I... in the environment and feeling it, like, seemingly getting a nice, comfortable position. Alright, I'm gonna follow after Moros, and I'm gonna skim the surface of the, uh, water. Okay. Gesh, what are you doing? I'm also following. Okay. As you all begin to head towards the center, Gesh, you're not wearing armor, remember that. I, I still have pretty high AC, but I know. Yeah. It's fucking insane. You have like a 16 AC even without it. 19. How so? Uh, 19. Explain to me how you have a fucking 19, please. What? I fixed out plus the plus one from the tower shield. Um, you're not- okay. In the water you won't be able to use the tower shield, but yes. I know. Okay. But yeah, with our question, did we get a long rest? No. <laughs> Shit. No, we're sleeping right now. Would that consider a, I, I will, I will, I will, I will say for this 
Remember where you're at, but I will give you a long rest in technicality for this set, this side session only. So go ahead and okay. mark down information about your character so you don't forget. Got it. That's Where's... fine. I uh, I have all my spells marked off anyways, except for five. Okay. Uh, no seven. I still have two second level spell slots and five first slots. Because next session, I Sunday, I will have to roll for wild encounters for your trial. Yeah, I'm. Uh, right. I'll I'll put it in. Uh, more of his five. Versus... Anyways. So as you all begin to swim down, Yodis, what's your passive perception? Nine. Oh God. <laughs> Moros, what's your passive perception? Uh, 23. I'm not even asking <laughs> Gesh. <laughs> you have a hot... Yes! <laughs> How? How? I <laughs> what the fuck? I have an 8 wisdom. <laughs> yeah, I have more wisdom than that. Anyways. Before. So, Moros, as you continue down, you could ever so slightly sense the feeling of magic here, of course, natural in nature, but as you, like, swim down and begin to, like, push your fingers across the, uh, silt bed of the ground, well, sandy bed of the ground, as you continue towards the center, the sand pushes off, and it's fine sand. Like, you could go to a an alchemist or wizard shop to get fine sand for any material components. This would probably... This is... much more refined. So to the like point where... To the, yeah, to the point where you almost think it's just dust and you just feel it, but you're like, that feels like grains of sand just a little bit. It's definitely been... It's either... It's definitely not naturally made. It almost reminds oh. you of when someone uses the, the Disintegrate spell. Oh, oh. shit. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> um, no it's just it's something like a well, lot it might, dangerous. It, it might not be that, but... I said it reminds hmm. you of that. Yeah. So, okay. Um, there's a lot of dust around us. Uh, sand. but I can, I can, yeah, uh, sand. You're still swimming but I can the still center. See. It's, it's like a good, it's still a good bit. It's like half, it's like three miles of swimming. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The lake, the, We're... sorry, the center of the lake is where you're going, right? Yeah. Yeah. Bad. Okay. Sorry. That's like seven miles. Oh. So it's going to take you a while. So I would like you guys to roll me a wild encounter. Oh boy. What have you rolled I'll... me a D100, please? Not please don't make it be me. Oh! 59. 59. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. 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 I really want to see what I would have had if I rolled. You watch as, like, this small serpent in the water <laughs> swims past you. And you're like, <gasps> and you just see, uh -oh. like, it's a water snake. Mm. No real danger to you. It seems to know that you're above it. And it seems to not really want to kill you. But as it does pass by you, you can see its blackened scales seem to reflect this almost prismatic sheen to them. And beneath you see this, like, deep color purple, uh, deep co purple coloration that seems to almost be like a shining, like, gemstone underneath as it slithers by and continues. And you see a single eye slit on the top of its forehead only. Uh, uh, am, I, am I in range to call it to Moros? You have a high athletics. Yeah, you managed to catch up to them at this point. Okay. Don't hurt the wildlife. I don't want to desecrate this place. Hmm? Very Why beautiful. did you... Wait a second, Yoda. Since I continue what? to swim. What... Why did you assume I was going to hurt the creatures of this, of this lake? We've been together for only a couple... Only a couple like days, days at this point, and the only thing you've done, a week. Is sorry, it's been two weeks. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was saying. That's what I was uh, thinking, but I couldn't remember exactly how long. Uh, 
we've only been together a couple of weeks, but in that time, you've summoned the undead, and when we captured the hag, instead of wanting to kill her, you wanted to keep her in prison so you could test on her and experiment. So, A perfectly I don't natural exact- response. What is so crazy about that? I'm all for the natural order of things, but I don't think you exactly, you and I, see eye to eye on nature. Ah, oh, you're so boring. <laughs> this thing uh, is fascinating, though. There's so much ambient niche, natural magic. Agreed. I wonder what it's uh, called. Be, ca- be careful. The sand feels the same as the ashes of a disintegration spell. I would know that feeling well. <laughs> That's only mildly worrying. <laughs> that is majorly worrying. But what I are really you talking care. about? Because I don't. You know guys are the... such worry warts. Don't worry about what spells I may or may not have casted back in my prime. And who or my may or may not have cast it on. And who I casted it on doesn't matter because it clearly didn't happen. You guys are so paranoid. We should go to the center. To me. I he's absolutely not, he's, not, he's not lying to you, but there seems to, like, he, he's not lying when he says it doesn't matter if you ask. It, it doesn't matter. He doesn't think it matters. Yeah. Well, life and death are a part of the natural order, I suppose. No matter yes, how and they happen to get in my way, so, you know, I was just, <laughs> I was expediting the process. I mean, passed by a few boulders under the water that seem to be ancient... Pieces of this ruined flying city. Or, not flying city, flying fortress. Flying city? Um, eventually, you do get s- towards one of these chains that comes off of it. Still not at the center, this chain comes down and spreads off for a mile. As you come up closer to it, you can see this large, bulky piece of iron that seems to be drilled into the floor of this lake. <clears throat> Hmm. Isn't that a drain? What is that? No, it's it's connected to a chain. <laughs> I think it's just to anchor the floating fortress. You see, um, the hunk of metal itself does have shape as you get closer. It seems to be this deep, dark iron that comes out to 12 or 13 large hooks that only a few of them seem to... You assume 13 based upon the uh, nature of how they're aligned. Um, They seem to come out to jagged, twisting, and turning points. Uh, Three-pointed, kind of triangular, like, bayonet points at the very top. The anchor's... The anchor's, like, base to top of the anchor is about 200 feet. Do you guys want to dive down? Yeah. I'm re- uh, I want to know what's at the center. Do you pass by the deep... anchor? You don't investigate it further? Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, I was... I'll... How, how yeah, deep like, exactly is it? Uh, so, at this point, if you're at the surface swimming and seeing this, it's a good half a mile deep. Half a mile deep. Okay, I want to go probably about, like, 30 feet up. And then just, like, nosedive into the water. Like a fucking... Like a... Like a seabird going straight into the water. Sorry, it wouldn't be half a mile deep. It would be about a quarter mile. So about... No, it would be half a mile. Because half a mile is like 2,500, right? (laughs) I thought you were going to retcon it to say, like, oh, it's like 20 feet. And you were just going to have me smack into the ground. Yeah, yeah. No. Uh, But yeah, you dive into the water. And these guys begin to dive down. You eventually get to the top of the anchor. And these chains are probably bigger than your body going up. Um, I look over. I look over at Moros. Blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> Sorry, I forgot we can talk. <laughs> what? Yeah, what do you think this is uh, meant for? Uh, can I make an insight check? Probably anchoring the floating island. Yeah. Um. I figured. I just if there was another purpose. Yeah, you make a you make an investigation check if you want on the anchor. You don't I have, you don't have any information on the anchor. Besides the big fucking anchor. The anchor itself, you recognize the metal. This is, um... 
And no, you don't recognize the metal. It seems similar to something you know. You know what Durathi steel is. Uh, it's a legendary metal of Durath specifically that is very rare to come upon. Uh, the fact that this almost confused you to make it think makes you think that it is a cousin type of metal to that. Um, staring at it. Make me a history check. Oh. Boy, I have another plus 11 to this. If only our... Uh, 24. God. You've never seen this metal before or heard of it. Oh. If only our history guy was here. Okrin would not know. <laughs> okay, so Actually, maybe. out of character, Okrin would know. <laughs> what? Oh. Yeah. He's investigated a ruin with this before. Um, or I assume he of has. Of all the times. Of all the times to miss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the one time we need him. Uh, <laughs> you also notice arconic and divine and natural runes. That's, well, not runes, but like magical circuitry. Like similar to the magical circuits within your body. The system, the mana system within your body. Almost similar to that, but within the anchor itself, like the anchor's alive, but it's not. Um, you do recall studying rocks and other natural formations. Uh, they do have similar magical systems to living beings. Um, oh. But this pronounced strange. Well, Iotis, to answer your question, I imagine the big fucking anchor is used to <laughs> to anchor the the flo the floating uh, fortress. Um, however, it strangely has a m very pronounced magical circuitry, which is very uncommon for in inanimate objects such as this. Um, a, a very pronounced magical what? Magical circuitry. Do you... Uneducated peasants. Oh my... Okay. <laughs> a man's about to give a lecture underwater next to an ancient anchor. By the way, this anchor's oh. like chains and the actual anchor has its own ecosystem grown on it. By the way. That's yeah. cool. Un <laughs> uneducated In all right i guess i'm doing this underwater next to an anchor like I you see to... like coral that's grown on it like ancient like vines and bits of seaweed that come off it fish are swimming in and like around it there seems to be bits of it that are rusted on the chains that they like make little hovels in with dirt and sand yeah okay i didn't expect to have to do this underwater next to an anchor and apparently we can talk this is not the strangest that I've ever done. By the done way, this I want for. you to go. You know, we can talk. I remember we can talk. I can't. Remember that I'm leaving. Don't do that, please. Don't do that. Remember that it's strange. Remember it's strange. Anyways, magical circuitry in every living and some inorganic. Uh, Thing on earth we have one think of it like the the veins in your body but it's for magic everything has one some more than others some a little more complex than others oh, such as one i'm not gonna fall for that <laughs> as you say that oh. iotis and you point backwards you're like oh damn he didn't actually what the fuck is that <laughs> You Moros, see you like a shape. You see a shape that's not clear in the water, starting to approach behind Moros. Moros, behind you! It, you Make notice I have, look. I have no time for your games right Moros. now. Moros, well, fine. I'll humor you. <laughs> see, there is nothing as I turn around with my eyes closed. Moros, you turn around. And you open your eyes. Nothing. What? Yeah, Iotis. No. As I told you. Now, as Moros tries to turn around to uh, lecture Iotis, Iotis is already swimming back up towards the surface. Okay. I should become an adventurer to get fucking lectured. I knew. I knew I should have gone to art school. Okay. <laughs> I ain't getting rejected. <laughs> I don't want the Germans saying that. Anyways. Oh, no. 
So, <laughs> what are you guys doing? Well, Yoda's just what ran away. This was on the boat. No, uh, but <laughs> I did not expect much, and yet I am still a little disappointed. <laughs> um. Know you're the work. you're the physically fit one of us. Drag that Asimar back down here. We have to. I am curious about the center of this body of water, and splitting up seems like a bad idea when we have no idea where we are. Uh, give me a minute <laughs> as I try to catch that. <laughs> It's I take out a stopwatch. You see me? I'm like, I'm like trying to, I'm trying to like, I'm so used to flying. I'm trying to fly through the water, and it's just not working. Gesh catches you very quickly, <laughs> and I drag <laughs> him back down. He grabs your wings and just starts to drag you back down. You're not a fucking dragonborn. You're a lizard boy. Fucking lizard, <laughs> lizard bitch. If I'm a lizard, you're a bird. Kaka, motherfucker. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Alright, we continue back down to Moros. Alright. Gash, you took 70 seconds. I'm disappointed. <laughs> yeah, he... You said a minute. He put on a little bit more resistance than I thought he would. No, it is. I, I underestimated him a bit. Mm. And I feel very stupid for that. And then well, you don't feel stupid, you are stupid. But that's a whole different matter. L ladies. Ironic coming from me, but <laughs> just you're both that. idiots. <laughs> Don't feel bad. You're both idiots. Now let's go it investigate. Idiot, but Don't I'm... tempt me. Oh, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> Anyways, so what are you doing? Uh, so clearly seeing that Yoris does not want to listen to this important life lesson. It's <laughs> going Um... I'll give like a last cursory glance to the anchor, mm -hmm. kind of paranoidly look behind me because I don't believe Yotus actually saw anything, but you never know. Um, and then attempt swear to swear in the distance you what? see something. You swear you feel in your body something staring at you. you. Give a shiver, even in this warm waters. It's getting warmer as you get further towards the center. By the way, you see a fish man tap dancing nearby. That why? You don't see anything. Hello, my honey. Hello, my bunny. Hello, my ragtime girl. Additionally, so... roll me a perception check. Okay. Uh, my perception is a plus eight. You swear, you you swear, you you're you pick something up, but you can't see anything. Twenty-four. I'm getting really high. Did you say forty-four? Really no, no twenty-four. 24. <laughs> okay, twenty-four. Right. just sees everything. Twenty-four. As you look towards the lake around you. You swear you see, like, sparkling around, like, the base of the anchor as well as in different parts of the lake. Different materials. The lake... What was raised here, it seems like... almost geometrically these sparks are at. Roll me an Arcana check. Come on. All right, plus eleven. Come on, please. Twenty-two. I'm cheating. You are rolling really well this time. I know, and I'm rolling in rolls. There's so. definitely something <laughs> magically innate to the position of these sparks or sparkly bits, but you're not sure what it is. Something beyond you. Hmm. That's infuriating. Uh, <laughs> But nothing is beyond me after a little bit of study. Can I try and take one? You swim down towards the base of the anchor to take one of these sparkly bits? Yes. Okay. You get down and you see this beautiful jade that seems to be growing uh, out of the... Not growing out of the stone, sorry. That seems to be embedded into the uh, sand itself. Uh, you eventually dig it out and <laughs> pull it out... And you see the jade itself seems to be uh, roughly a, what is it called? It would be, 
It has 30 sides to it. No. Um, as you look at it and you feel it in your hand, it is very fragile to the touch, and you almost feel like you're going to break it just by holding it. Oh, no, boy. What a curious little gem. Hmm. And I know this is, like... I would imagine I know that this is far more brittle than what a gem like this should be. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? Do I do I feel a magical circuitry in it like I did with you the do. anchor? You do, but this yeah. one is more defined, more specific. It doesn't seem natural. It's specifically carved. Um, you could feel that it was specifically and intricately made, and as you're looking at it, you're like. This is definitely a piece to a frame of something magical. Hmm. Make me an athletics check. Well, not an athletics check. A strength saving throw. Oh, no. Am I going to break hmm. it? Oh, I'm... Am I by Yotas? Did Yotas come and swim down? Uh, I did try to talk to him before. I tried to say, what is that? And Am I in your aura, then? I would assume no. so. Uh, hold on, hold on. What the fuck's going oh, on? No. Sorry. I, I I had my brother come in. What are you guys saying? The strength saving throw. Iotis had come down before he had yeah, examined then it you, to they, ask. Those two were swimming away as you were investigating. So, unfortunately, no, you would not be in his aura. All right. Okay. All right. Hey, roll high, motherfucker, please. Oh, 20. Dude, it is just... Okay. The it, bot it, loves it, me today. The bot the knows fight. that this is all a dream, so it's letting you roll high. Yeah. <laughs> You hold it, and you almost break it just by holding it, and you're like, whew. Okay, le lessen your grip a little bit. And you stare at this thing. Make me an arcana check. Can we keep the good streak going? 30! 30! <laughs> the way this is carved, how it seems to connect geometrically to the other pieces, 30 other pieces specifically just by how many sides there are, where it is, like, where its center connects underneath the center of the tower. How it shines and glistens. How it seems to be intricately made. This is... This is a cornerstone to some sort of ritual. Hmm. Ah. Taking this gem away from its position is going to weaken the ritual, specifically. A, a, a ritual of this magnitude, this scale, definitely needs this many cornerstones, if not more. Okay. It, can I... No. Is this ritual linked to how this fortress floats? Can I determine you that? Have or... deter <laughs> you have not studied uh flying islands you could do that while you're on draconia but unfortunately you have not studied into the nature of flying islands or how to create them or how they were created plus that information has long been lost besides for float stone um flying magic is a pretty powerful magic in this world anyways and it's not known by a lot of people uh besides in tyrellian you'd probably have to go to tyrellian to try and figure anything out or find ancient Ruins in Draconia. Nod, nod, wink, wink. Um, <laughs> but the area here seems euphoric. And the floating island, you have not seen the architecture of it before. Just as you came up to the surface, as you were informed of it by Eotis, you have to get a closer inspection, but you're not sure you've seen this kind of creation. Okay. You're not sure what ritual is taking place here, but even seeking through your vast repository of knowledge, you get the feeling this cornerstone is a pretty important piece to the ritual. All of the cornerstones would be. And taking or breaking it would give a larger mishap chance to the ritual if it's not a continuous ritual such as a sealing one or something like that okay break it, break it. i'm not gonna break it this is 
No, I'm not gonna break it. This is this is a wonder of arconic creation. I'm not gonna break it. Curious. It's linked to a ritual of which I'm not certain, but it is a cornerstone. Breaking what? it would So you're swimming to, to them who are swimming away? Yeah, we're still swimming away from you, pal. Oh, I thought you I thought Gesh was dragging you back down to me. No. No, that, that already happened. That already happened and they started swimming away, like I said, that's why I didn't get the bonus. Alright, then I'll swim out uh, I Morris is selfish. He'll take the thing he just broke off. Roll me a D one hundred, please. Oh boy. You can tell me and Gesh haven't even noticed that you're lagging behind. We're so busy arguing with each other about thirty nine. Fucking lucky. You need on that roll. You needed a twenty nine or lower. Oh, sorry. No. In technicality, you needed a. Hold on. Give me a second here. No. You needed a. Give me a second here. I need to. I need to look at the rules again here. Um. Uh oh. Okay. No. No. If you didn't roll, if you rolled a, so it was thirty. Thirty one. So you had to roll a 32 or higher. You're fine. Mm. However, as you begin to swim towards the center to find them, and eventually getting towards the center, you do feel the stone seems to become inert and just crumbles into bits in your hand. Oh, God. Well, that's one area of... Knowledge lost, though there are 29 more. As you're swimming and saying this, you've managed to catch up to the other two, and as you do, you're about to say something to them as they notice you come up, and everyone feels a... a shake. Uh Uh-oh. Uh, what was that? It stabilizes. No one touched anything, right? No, definitely not. Okay, as long as we did... <laughs> Oros, hmm? what did you do? I didn't do anything. Lie. Another lie. Yeah. Oros, <laughs> you did something. Okay, that there, was, that. there was a gem, and I grabbed it, and it was very fragile. And I swam over to you both, and it crumbled as I swam after becoming a nerd. And, and you know, that's not my fault. He's lying. And you're- so, what you're saying is we're on a magical flying fortress and you found you're a magical You're not on the fortress, gym. you're below it. Yeah, we're in the water. Can we look up at the fortress as it falls? Well, you're getting towards the center at this point. You're not in the direct center, and the fortress is direct center. Mm-hmm. Oh, alright. So, you're mean. saying you found a magic gem and you took it? And well, I don't it? have it, and I well, I don't have it anymore. I didn't break it. I think. Oh, my. he's un- you're unsure if that's a lie or not. Moros. Hmm. <sighs> let's keep going. Whatever you did, it's already been done. So, let's just hope there's no dire consequences to your. Well, don't you jinx it, it now. Ones. You are the stupid ones. <laughs> Eventually, you get to the very center of the crater. You can see above you where the water ripples, where the waterfalls pour down upon the top of the lake above you. And below you, in the expanse downwards, two miles about, you can see the vegetation that clouds your vision. You have to swim down to get a better view. Mm. Let's go. Yep. Yep. We swim down. We swim down, baby. You begin to swim down. And as you swim down past where you believe the bottom of the lake would be, you see it unnaturally carves a cone down. And oh. beyond that point, there is no life, no fauna, no flora. It is just straight stone in a, in a very geometric, unnatural carve. Uh, you could see a bit of sand is pushed past you down, and you watch it just disappear into the darkness below. Not it. Not it. 
What the? Well, it for lost. what? Yeah. Go in. You. Actually, hold on. Maybe we should test it with something else first. Make sure it's not just insta killing it, insta killing whatever is going through. Well, Moro, stick your hand in. What? It's not like well, my. It's not my. Straight. It doesn't go straight to darkness. It's just like the like of le lack of light down here, is what yeah. you assume, or maybe not. Eotis, my hand is worth more than both of your lives combined. Well, then stick your tits in. No. You can become a guy again. That's not how that what? works. You're... I'm dumbfounded. <laughs> Eotis has no idea how this, how this shit works. You... I am want to say I'm surprised, but I honestly say I'm not. I can honestly say I'm not. This is... This is so in character for you. <laughs> what are you guys doing? So are there any like fish swimming by? Can I grab one? Sure, you grab a fish. I'm gonna <laughs> Yeah, that was the most laid back uh, fish I've ever seen. I'm I'm gonna kill I'm gonna kill it. Um but and then portals, let it why? sink to and let it sink into the darkness to see if blood comes up. So you kill the fish. Yeah. Roll me a d100. Oh, no. Why would you kill that? You are interrupting the beautiful ecosystem of this. 34. 34. You guys feel another quake. <sighs> the water grows hot. And it's it's pretty temperate around here. It's like 80 degree water already. I need everyone to make a con save. I hate you so much, Moros. You guys Yo, are all we're in your stuff. aura. Mm. Yep, yep. You know, the aura does not that? affect here. Really? <laughs> not for this. Would it affect me? No. Oh. But you have advantage, Eotis. Oh, cool. Still bad. I don't think any of you guys are succeeded in succeed this, by the way. I guess got 27. So much more. You guys got 27? That's a failure. Yeah. Oh, then we all fail. Yeah, I got I got a nineteen on the dice. Anybody roll a twenty yeah. or below? Uh, I did, mm -hmm. and so did Barbados. How? What did you guys roll? Eotis, what did you roll? I rolled a fifteen. Fifteen. I rolled a twenty-eight. Twenty. I mean eighteen. My bad. My bad. Eighteen. 18. Okay, you guys only critically failed then. <laughs> no. Uh, any of you guys roll natural twenty? No, you didn't. Yeah. Um. Okay. I'm gonna do this per person. Eotis. You suffer double this damage, by the way, and it's true damage, so there's no negating it. Oh, I fucked up. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, I forgot that I have proficiency in these saves. Well, what? Yeah, it's too late now. Yep, too late. Uh, you have a plus eight con? Yes, I have a 26 constitution. No, then you would have you would have succeeded, it's fine. You take no damage. I hate you so much, Moros. Uh, I did not want to kill any of this. Your permanent H. You permanently have your maximum HT reduced by twenty-four. What? Uh, sorry, forty-eight. It, it'll go away after this. Don't worry. Uh, sixty-six for you, Basilius. I, I have in I've inured to undead. My maximum HP can't be reduced. It can by this. Damn it. Okay. Uh, this is just this is just until the the side store is over. By the way. Um, okay. You're very lucky that's the case, Moros, because <laughs> the, my whole thing as an as an elemental paladin is I like I defend the elemental part of this and. The, like, and, the as wild... a and as and... a necromancer, I don't care. So, um... as the fish's body begins to fall down into the darkness, blood does seep up. From guys... my wound, or is it like an unnormal amount from what I caused? I want a fish slap more. It's coming from the fish. No, I yeah, know that. Just but... put it in there. Yeah, I know. I mean, like, 
is it the is it like a steady trickle of blood from whatever wound I caused from it, or is it more blood than what I produced from a wound I caused? Like, would would I assume that the fish is like the fish body's destroyed? Did you, you stab it in the face or? No, it is a sufficient trickle upwards. But you do watch as you're standing here in the beautiful, lustrous lake of purples, pinks, blues, tropical, beautiful colors begins to turn deep red. I think we should get out of the water. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, My thoughts exactly. I was gonna, I was gonna punish you for killing. You look yep. around very quickly, and you watch as the ecosystem around you is just immediately starting to wither. Yeah, we should get out of here. <laughs> there will be consequences for this later, Moros. Hmm? I start swimming up. Okay. So will I. Yeah, I think we all do. <laughs> so, you guys have all been breathing water, right? Yep. I need all of you to make a con save as you immediately start drowning. Do I... We... Does my aura, oh, no. or just still no? You uh, your aura does affect this, yes. Okay. Everyone gets a plus four. Oh my god! Oh my god! Um, this might be bad. I <laughs> have I have two DMs inspiration. I could use one. I have one DMs inspiration, but I don't know if I want to waste it here. I don't think I will. I love it. Okay. I got a 14. Eotis, you both suffer one failed death save. <laughs> and you uh, are how many... a mile underwater. How? Oh, oh shit. shit. Okay, how many feet is that? Is it like a thousand? That is about five. That's five thousand. Oh boy. I would have to cast Dimension Door ten times to get us out of here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Meanwhile, Gesh. Mm-hmm. You're fine. Like, you guys, think... you guys have no air in your life. So okay. we're not breathing uh, it anymore, huh? Unfortunately, you guys have no breath. Gesh can remain conscious. You guys are starting to die at this point. Like, you are drowning, but you can still move and do whatever you're doing. Gesh can do whatever the fuck he wants. Do I Perfect. notice that Yotis and I are, like, both drowning and Gesh is fine? Yeah, you see, like, your eyes are starting to bulge, and you watch as, like, Gesh is, like, swimming, and he's looking at both of you. Like, the fuck is wrong with both of you? You guys okay? <laughs> All right, um... <laughs> Like, Gesh hasn't even I'm... realized his water breathing is... Like, he... Actually, Gesh was never using water breathing, we'll say. <laughs> he was holding his breath this whole time! Yeah, he go up, just came back down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fuck, he, um... he never really talked underwater either, so it makes sense. Yotis, I'm gonna try and get us out of here faster. Gesh, I hope you're okay with that, but me and him are drowning. We have to. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, no. I'm gonna... I'm gonna grab Yotis really hard and cast Dimension Door. I can do this five times technically and get us halfway there um in six seconds well not in six seconds but in 30 seconds i can what what happens when you cast a dimension door do you like what happens we, to do you, need, you do you need vocal i do need vocals the only thing yeah. i need for it fortunately you can't i can't cast it damn okay okay we're I... underwater uh, I might have the ability to save us here. Oh, you I'm, got it. Uh, I'm a very fast boy if I want to, so I'm grabbing both of them mm-hmm. and just. Your movement speed's act- halved as soon as you're trying to grab them and bring them up through the water, and you don't have a, you don't have you don't have a swim speed. I, I'll say because you saved that you saved against the effect. I'll leave your movement speed normal underwater, but then you have because you're grabbing both of them. It's fine. Because I am using um, Divine Adrenaline, mm-hmm. which doubles it, which makes it 30, and then I'm double lashing the whole way, which makes it 120 feet. That's nowhere near close it's enough. It's 30, dashing to 60, uh, dashing to 120. Okay. 120 per turn. Okay. And? So I would try to get as far as possible to get them as far as possible. Oh man, if only you had the armor, you could have gone another 120. I know. Let me check if I have any items. I- I'm, I'm looking through my stuff. Is there any chance I could stick my, like, coin purse of holding up to my mouth and try to breathe in any air? You certainly try. <laughs> At I this point, I think you way. have to. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't think I have any other ways of breathing underwater. So... 
How much coin do you have in your purse? I have zero. Uh, wait. That gold that we got from that chest, did we split it already? No. no we haven't even touched it. So you okay, zero. then no money. I have zero money. All my gold is currently in raw metal. You open the coin purse that leads to an interdimensional space where you put things in and it sucks them in. To try and get some air from it. As you open it, what little air that may have remained in your lungs gets pulled out. I need you to make a con save. Infraction. I'll say at this point, you guys are like 500 feet up. 18. 18. You manage just barely hold on to what little air is choking. Uh, you guys are 500 feet up. Moros, what are you doing by this point? Uh, Barnabas, forgive me. I mean, uh, Yodas, forgive me. I'm going to grab his face and give him air from my own lungs. So I'm going to, like, kiss him. I am desperately trying to stop him. You from do that, you, you you immediately start failing death today. It's just so you guys are... Oh, re oh okay. I mean, guess is fine, for... but you guys are rolling death saves. You guys are rolling for death saves, and it's getting a higher DC each time you make it. If you give them the rest of your air that you have in your lungs at all, you will start drowning faster and immediately start losing death saves as well as making them. Yeah, Morris probably wouldn't do that. Fuck, is, do I have any spells that don't require verbal components? That's what I'm looking for right now. Everything just wants to be verbal. Uh, the only one I have currently... Oh, I have... Well, counter... That's counter spell. That wouldn't help us. Man, subtle spell's a pretty good thing. Does it regret? Yeah, I don't have and somatic. Yeah, I don't have so I don't have meta magic adapt. Yeah, imagine, yet. imagine. I know I've linguist and observant um, though. <laughs> that doesn't help me. Nope. I. Uh, Goblin. Yes. Should I? Should I try to have my body of eternity have kind of like the energy from it? Pull like push that into them so they barely stay alive. You can push some of your eternity points into them, yeah. I will. Okay. Uh, how many are you pushing to each one? How much do I think I would need to keep them at least? You don't fucking enough? know. How much are you push them? Take a guess. Are you gonna make us pop like a balloon, or are you gonna save the day? For now, I'm putting. 10 points in each of them. Okay. So, just so you're aware, if you want to write this under your ability, because your character will now know this, if you push 10 of your eternity points into a person who has a death save fail, they... one of the death saves disappears. It's just wiped off. It's uh, huge! So... Eotis. Yep. Moros, you both now yeah. have zero death save fails, and you're 500 feet up. At this point... Whoa. Gesh moves again. You guys are now about seven, eight hundred feet up. What are you guys doing? I'll say you, you're getting to the thousand foot point. What are you guys doing? I genuinely don't think there's anything we can do other than keep trying to swim up. Are you guys helping uh, him swim? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Kick, I'll kick my legs to give extra speed, I guess. Yeah we're, yeah, we're like trying to paddle with him. I'm using my wings to try to paddle with as well. Okay. Go ahead and make me con saves, both of you. Okay. 12. 12, okay. 14. Again? <laughs> what the fuck? Both of you fail, so go ahead and put the first death save again. Okay. Gash, anything what? during the during the thousand feet of travel? Not really. Okay. I, I'm just I'm just dashing. Okay. You continue to dash to 2,000 feet now. Anybody doing anything before you roll your saves? Nope. At this point, it's been a few minutes, and you guys are... <laughs> continuously drowning your lungs are filling uh you both you make your saves again and gesh at this point i do need you to make another save okay 21 okay 22 dude we are just can we just keep no. i am yes. Yes, yeah. oh, thank god <laughs> okay yes. okay yes. Hey, it's it. <laughs> yes, you yes. succeed because you have not failed just yet. Eotis, you fail. Mark a second. Dude, that saves. Eotis, your vision is starting to go blurry. You're seeing like blood pouring out of all your orifices just from just from not being able to breathe. Your lungs are on fire. Your spleen feels like it's about to explode outwards. 
Moros, you're barely yeah. hanging in there. Your vision's getting a little blurry. <laughs> Gesh, you're almost out of air in your lungs, but you don't want that water to come in. I push in ten into um, into Yodis. Okay, Yodis, you're back to one. Uh, this is so intense. <laughs> <Fuck. laughs> yes. oh, oh, oh. Three thousand feet. Anybody doing anything? I'll say. I'll say from. I'll say at this point. No, no, never mind. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna change things up now that you're closer. Three thousand feet. Anybody doing anything? Same things. Um. Uh, yeah. The the water around you is now deep, deep blood red. And you can feel those shakes getting more constant. My blade will blow close. Oh, wait. Um, are we making con save? Oh, wait, no. Never mind. That's a stupid question. Never mind. Exactly. That's me. Anyways. Both of you make con saves, please. And Gesh, make another one. Yeah, okay. This is to see if you start drowning or not, Gesh. So you're fine for death saves for now. Okay. Guess you are fucking fine. Eodis, Absolutely. You're lucky. You're lucky you didn't roll one lower because that would have been a critical a crit fail. fail. Yeah, but you okay. failed. Basilius, you succeed. How the oh, fuck boy. are you rolling so well, Moros? You guys. Are I, th this is this is an anomaly. Eodis, your vision is just completely gone now. You're just you're just flapping your wings in this water and kicking, hoping, hoping, hoping. 4,000 feet. We still have so far to go. Mm-hmm. Um, guess, guess. I am putting this time 20 into Iotis because I don't want him to critically fail and just die. It only goes to 10. Ah, okay, then just 10. Yeah. Alright. So get rid of one. As you guys continue to get up to the 4,000 mark. So, there's 4,000 feet left to go? No, 4,000 feet from the bottom from where you were, you're up. So you there's 1,000. Yeah. Yes, Got after it. this point. After this say, there's another 1,000 feet or so. Because it's like 5,250. Um, I need everyone to make another con save. At this point, Gesh, your DC is getting pretty up there. <laughs> no. Okay. As hold on. Okay. Morris, please. <laughs> we can't all My fail. Thing's not. I don't know if I failed. I probably that did. Is, that is a failure, Basilius. So, Basilius, you're at two. Um, Eonis is dead. Eonis, go ahead and describe. I, I was. I was going to say. Uh, as as I feel myself finally start succumbing to like the uh, the water as I drown, I think to myself as I I think like give one last prayer to the new water goddess, the water uh, nymph that I now serve as a paladin. What's her name? You her should name? fucking know this. I yeah, said Nielia. Nielia. Okay, good, good, good. Just making sure you knew it. I had it marked down under fate, so I had to go. Uh, uh, rename, rename. Okay, and what are you trying to say to her? I'm sorry I couldn't serve you longer, and I thank you one last time for saving my life. And now, as I return to the depths and I feel the water fill my lungs, I would I want to spend my last time, my last bit of life, thinking of you. Thank you. All right, good to know. Gesh, you begin to drown. No. And it's a critical yet. failure for you, Gesh. I know. As you feel the water pooling into your lungs, you're slowing down. You guys are just nearing the surface. 200 more feet, 200 more feet. The water is pouring in. It's too far. And Moros, yeah. as you're reaching up, the light is starting to fade. You look down as you see this burst of energy. And you see the water clear for but a second. And you see Eodas' body floating there in a torrent of water. 
pushes you and the rest up. Up, up, up. And eventually, bursting out of the water, you land. Fully <clears throat> conscious. As the air begins to push the water out of your lungs. You come back to consciousness for about a second. And you look around. And you see a beautiful fortress of flowers, metals, stones, buildings, architecture you've never seen before. The sun has risen, but it almost looks like perpetual dawn. The sky's colors are purples and golds and silver. Gosimir and nature. You could see ley lines dance across the star-laden sky, even in daylight. And you can see the tower stretches and seems it stretches thousands of feet into the sky, but it seems to almost shift in mold and seems to almost fade in and out of reality itself. You watch your friends as life begins to beat back into them. As they come back to, you're both at one HP now, Iotis. Mm -hmm. uh, and Gesh. Oh, thank God. As you both come back to, you see Moro staring at this menagerie of items you've never seen before. Flowers, stones, as many things in this courtyard. And I said fortress, but it's more of a courtyard, a large courtyard of... Things, items, living, not. As I as I get up, like slowly realizing I'm still alive, I vomit out the leftover water in my lungs. What? What's fucking close? This has been one hell of a beach episode. What? I want to do with that. What is this episode you speak of? I don't know. But I've had enough of water for a while. Don't you don't you serve a water god a uh, water spirit? I do. Moros, as he says that, you could hear the faint trickling of a fountain. As you stare further into the courtyard, you see this beautiful um you see these beautiful torches made of this metal steel, kind of blackened color that seem to be similar to the anchors that seem to stand Seven feet tall, but have, at weird angles. They're not straight poles. They have braziers at the top that have multicolored flames surrounding this small patch of circular dirt with a fountain. Um, a little bit away. Can't really make out much more detail. Small wind blows over you. Hmm. Man, that was entire luck that we survived this. Yes, I indeed. I thought that we would have made... Oh. I'm surprised we made it this far up. Oh, well... I not do that again. <laughs> you know, the water nice. was quite nice, though. Very nice temperature. As I walk towards the fountain. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. As you begin to walk towards the fountain, you look back to Gesh as he says that, just to give a slight, a slight chuckle and a nod, and you see the walls of the fortress, this courtyard, are gone, and it looks like you're on... It looks like the entire island is sitting upon a cloud to you. But you blink and the the fortress walls reappear. What the? As you approach oh, yes. the fountain, Iotis, Gesh, what are you two doing? I'm just following Moros. Okay. Moros, that reminds me. I mm -hmm. forgot to pay you back earlier. Can I make an unarmed attack against uh, Moros to punch him in the face? Sure, make another attack. <laughs> what the fuck? Natural one. No. 23. Moros, what's your AC? 16. That hits. Alright, you uh, you take 4 damage. Ah! <laughs> but as I as I punch him in the face, I'm gonna use lay on I'm gonna use my lay on hands and heal him for uh another four HP. Well so you don't know he, you don't he... know how much you're gonna deal to him, so how much would you have put into the hit? Before. The damage is just four. Yeah, but how much would you have put into the hit uh, for lay on hands before you hit him? 
Oh, uh, I'm trying to, like, negate the damage so he yes, feels I, the Yes, I know, I much. know, but let me tell you something. Your character would have to put the magic in before you hit him. So how much would you have put That's into your fist point. before you hit him? All right. This, well, ain't, uh, this guess... ain't the wrong way to use healing magic, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll put ten points in because I'm not okay. exactly sure how much damage I'm going to do with this punch. Okay. But as I, as I hit him... Uh, he heals, but still feels the pain of the punch. Sure. That's for the fish, and almost getting me killed. Asshole. I actually, I actually feel better now that you hit me. What? Yeah. Well. Oh, as much as so I want, that, as so much as I want to knock you on your ass. <laughs> guess it's not my dom. <laughs> so we have to do a little masochist. These hands are rated E for everyone. Uh, I'm gonna vortex warp <laughs> into the sky. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The abacus um, moves. Oh no. Oh. So, you eventually get to the fountain. As you do, you see this beautiful fountain of almost Greek design. A statue of three uh, three feminine figures, and. They seem to all be standing. Uh, behind them is a pedestal of just flowing... Uh, it's all made of marble, but it's all colored weirdly. A flowing marble of multitudes of colors that seem to intertwine and intermix into a uh, a bending platform, almost like when you peel a banana and it, the peel goes off to the sides. But in the center of the peel, there is this world, which you guys recognize as Turam, um, immediately just by how it looks. Where did you get a banana? And it seems to be floating. Can I make a like insider religion check? Uh, let me finish. Has... Let me finish after I fucking get the dragon here now. Uh, Wait, what? Uh, but no. But you see, it's floating there. Like you guys know the Eye of Magnus quest in Skyrim, right? Yeah. yeah. It's floating oh, there. And it seems to be mind. swifting, shifting, and turning. And every so often, you'll see a and like a. Like, almost when you drop water, a ripple on the Tramian orb for a second before it stops. And it's like every few seconds you see one of those. And you feel magic coming from it. You see the three female forms. One of them is holding a hand out, and there's just this weave that seems to come off it and surround the entirety of the statue. Uh, almost like a, a spider net or a web. Or sorry, a spider web or a net. Uh, you see another one that seems to hold a flame... Uh, well, sorry, hold uh, her hand out, and these, like, four yeah. marbles are floating above her hand. Fire, earth, water, air. And she's just holding them. Uh, you could see that this one is red. The original one was blue. And you could see another one. An unpainted one, it seems. White, but with, like, small bits of purple and gold upon their body. Uh, this toga-like... Uh, this toga-like made of stone... That seems to furl across her body, and she holds up what seems to be uh, surrounding the entirety of this fountain. Floating marble stars that seem to move and shift and shimmer and glow. I'm really annoyed that we don't have our historian with us. And then you also no. see this floating nimbus that seems to surround the entirety of the Taramian world and the statue itself. It seems to move and almost like form kind of like this flowing mist around the entirety of these statues. This purplish pink color. It seems to have nebulous kind of designs with the stars as well. It seems almost like deep gaseous space. Or deep space gash. A deep space gash? Can I make, like, an insight or religion check to see if these are the three moon goddesses? Sure. Uh, make a religion check. 24. Though you're not Dorathian, you have studied the three moon goddesses because they were an ancient religion that were worshipped and very rarely worshipped nowadays, but they are in contention with, Ty uh, with Tyrakian um, uh, moon religions. Uh, especially nowadays with the Turokian moon religions kind of becoming uh, crusaders and uh, inquisitors uh, and destroying other religions in the area. Um, 
this seems to be a very fine depiction of the three moon goddesses, as well as some more lore to it that you don't know about. However, huh. um, there se this seems to be very delicately carved or created, and it seems to be much more fine detailed. As you look, you could see the face. You could almost see the faces, but they seem to be blotted out by this mist. Uh, it's definitely a beautiful depiction. Careful, friends. We are in blessed grounds. I believe this is a very significant tribute to a trio of goddesses. What? They're part of the creation myth, right? The creation mythos, yes, of Turan. Yeah, they they are part of the creation mythos of Turan itself. We are in very prominent uh, land right now. You know what that means, Moros? Who knows? You killed a, you killed a god's fish. Well, we, I don't know if this belongs to a god, but if it does, then I may most certainly be in quite a bit of trouble. But I will we say will the water find pouring the water pouring out of the fountain seems to be the same color as the water that was down be before you guys killed the fish. The air here is chilled, as if you are on a snowy mountain, by the way, and the water is giving off steam, but no snow is seemingly blanketing the walkways of this courtyard, or, like, the important areas of the courtyard. And for context, when I say you see, like, large metal pieces that you don't know, I'm talking street lamps, like, actual street lamps. Oh. Like, modern-day street lamps? Modern-day, yes. Oh, my. And other modern-day inventions that your characters can't conceptualize. What curious creations. Those things look very... Advanced. Interesting. Not even Agaburst, at least before their sundering. That, that their character, technology. Agaburst, was nearing Space Age. Oh. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, I... Would, I don't... Uh, your character wouldn't know that, a... like... Yeah. It was more. Just, it was more steampunk space age. It wasn't this level. That's yeah. still like impressive. Yeah. Yeah. How curious. Oh, like... Shame Okrin isn't here. They well, I'm not sure if they would even like this. They're more of a past kind of guy, not this future tech. Yep. I assume. The fuck you mean future tech? Oh. Fuck you. Well, it's you advanced. Take psychic I figure. No, fuck you. <laughs> he just dies. Uh, I mean, I would be low, but I wouldn't die. Um, no, uh, you're not sure what this uh, tech is. You assume maybe future, maybe magical tech that you just haven't seen before. I, would... um, I'm gonna do it. I'm... Uh, I would like to go up to the fountain mm -hmm. that the goddesses have, and I would like to take out the vial of the Lake of Eternity, and. I would like to offer a prayer and then pour the water into the fountain. Oh damn! I would like to. Okay. I would like to specifically uh, pray that Nialia, uh, be uh, becomes happy from whatever happened to her in the past that hurt her so. Interesting. Okay. I, I, I wish I wish for her happiness essentially. Okay. But I'm, yeah. You pour the water into the fountain. Get rid of the item, please. As you do so, you all three hear a shifting, and you watch as a doorway appears uh, onto the tower that seems to be the cobbled and dirt path that is surrounding the fountain it starts to expand towards this doorway. I suppose it would be rude to not accept their invitation? You watch as, on the sides of this appearing stoneway, grooves, almost like aqueducts in the ground appear, and a bit of the water from the fountain begin to pour in. And you see the doorway is not open yet. Uh, there's no, there's a, There seems to be a doorway carved into it, but there's no actual door that you could see. And you watch as these large gears appear. As the water, you know water, when it falls down, it could turn gears and whatnot, like water wheels. It gets yeah. up to the, these large gears, and it doesn't fall onto them, it's below them. But you watch it suddenly 
inverse gravity as it starts to pour up them and the tears turn inwards towards the tower. As you watch, the doorway suddenly shifts and disappears and you see an entrance to the tower. A strange shimmering barrier which you could pass through if you wanted to. Ah, before we go, I take out a little handkerchief and I dab the blood off of the mou- our, all of our mouths as I assume we were dying and we had some blood loss. I will say, Make ourselves look a bit presentable. I will say everyone hit that long rest button for your character here just because technically you would be restored back to full health here at the moment. Alright. Does that include the uh, max health that mm-hmm. we took earlier? Yeah, that's why. Okay. That's specifically why. Got it. Are those still the resources that I spent? No. Ah, okay. Darn. Actually, yeah, sure, why not? Fuck it, yeah. Yippee. You guys are gonna need it anyways. Oh, oh, no. oh no. What did you do, Moros? <laughs> oh, this is story-based, but just to let you know, I have been adding health. Alright, um, everyone look your best. We might be meeting some very important figures to Teramian Mythos. Um, I doubt it, but you never know. I like fix my I, I like fix my clothes and like make sure all my feathers are like properly in order, mm-hmm. all dried out from the water we were in earlier. Well, let's go. As you step past the threshold, you all feel euphoria pass through you. I blessed it. God damn it. <laughs> I'm joking. And I'm you, joking. specifically, Moros, you can see a similar scene that you read in a book and that passed through your mind. Clouds begin to pass through your vision as you all step into a beautiful heaven Garden of Eden. Think salt plant, salt fields, uh, or salt, salt, how do I explain it? It's the, it's like the Evangelion thing, you know, where, like, the water is on the ground and it reflects back up the sky? Yeah. And it's an endless expanse of that. But you do see a Greco-Roman kind of styled garden outside of Large bushes of green shrubbery and other colored shrubbery. Shrubbery you have not seen before. Gold, rainbowish color. You see large Greek ionic pillars that seem to be connected with this circulars topping to it. These large flags and banners that fall from it. Long streamers that pass by uh, into the sky and seem to blend with it. The sky itself is sunny. Beautiful clouds that seem to... You look up and it's a gossamer sky with purples. Uh, almost a sunset, but it's straight day. Beautiful. As you approach this large amphitheater, you see on its very back, uh, as you approach it, you do see like the amphitheater has multiple layers going down, well, levels going downwards. And you can see like spirits walking through of golden auras, blue auras, white auras. But they all seem to vanish as you walk through. Um, and as you begin to look around, the plants and everything seems to be beautiful. The wind passes through. It's a nice chilled but temperate aura. Uh, well, temperature here. As you begin to walk through down to the bottom, you can see this large fountain, I would say, but it's not a fountain. You see a basin of, um, stone, almost like a well, and floating above it, a large crystal a familiar material to you, Gesh, and you, Moros. A bismuth sheened crystal, hundreds of feet tall. Small shales crack off of it and float before they fall down to the basin of water below, and as they hit, they dissolve, leaving naught but a ripple on this bit of water. As you approach, On the opposite side, well, no, on the same side that you approach from, sorry, you see, standing there, in a toga, long, gilded hair that seems to fall down, braided, almost like Zai's picture, 
but not exactly. Braided falls down and swirls around them, hitting the ground and seemingly going like a carpet. Hundreds of feet, maybe. A figure. Humanoid. Pale. Standing about... No more than five, 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 six. That seems to be staring at this crystal, and he seems to, like, move his finger to the right once. And as he does, a small bit of the crystal pops off and falls like a leaf into the water before it dissolves. You guys are about 30 feet from this individual. Goblin. Yes? Is this area look like the realm I had east together from the notes that I was studying on the you train. Immediately, you immediately recognize the area oh. of imminence, yes. Oh, fuck. Who are we meeting? Um, this is, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh, uh, 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 but... Oh, you should I... know if you're staring here. Hmm. It, it was the realm of imminence, right? That's what imminence, it was yes. called? Yeah. Well, this is you've the all finally arrived. Should we kneel? No, I don't I'm like not... that. By the way, you guys are like talking to yourself quietly and not talking to him, and he's just responding to everything you're saying. Yeah. Like, do I see his mouth move? You, he's not facing you. Oh. Oh. Interesting. But is this, like, out loud, or is it in my head? Both. It's sourceless oh. out loud, but it's also in your head. Almost like it's coming from all directions. I'm curious. This is a nice realm I assume you are in control of. Oh, there's more. You... Sorry. Oh, you know so little. Admittedly. But there's always room to learn. Roll a persuasion check. Oh boy. <laughs> Are we gonna have to fight God? Um, do I have advantage? <laughs> no. Alright, come on. I was rolling high for skill checks that one. all day. Please Holy don't shit, roll that my... one. Uh, I will really actually sick? cry. Dice bot, bless me today, please. Uh, Dice bot, give me fifteen. Ooh. That's we're we're not taking that. Do I spend a DM's inspiration, boy? Yeah. I have two. I have two. If you have two, I think it's alright to waste. Unfortunately, yeah. you cannot spend a DM's inspiration on this. Ow! You know, God just sees the uh, DM's inspiration. Is like nah. He looks at you and goes, "Oh no, no, no! Don't spend that." It's a nice resource. <laughs> oh, you no. see, like, as you're, like, standing there uh, and you try to speak your words again, you see, like, a secondary version of you that's speaking, and he just snaps his fingers and it disappears. Uh, oh, that's uh, kind of awesome. Well. Let's see you prove yourself first. And as he says that, he turns around and you could see the bottom half of a face completely clean shaven pale a nose that comes out a little bit too far well not a little bit too far but almost a little bit too far definitely roman or greek in nature um as he turns around his above his nose it just you can't make out any details besides long golden hair that seems to trail off like bangs but trails off Far and far, and as you try to follow it, it seems to just disappear into etherealness. Uh, Boris? He holds his what hand is... up, and the entire area shifts into just a floating city of pillars and flowers. I need all of you to roll initiative. Ah, oh. uh, now we got this. All right, oh, uh, initiative is plus two. That was actually so fucking cool, the way you described him just, like, saying no to the second version of him speaking. My initiative curse returns once again. Oh, uh, I, I won't do any of his special abilities here for initiative, because he has a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll, just, I'll just go straight up. Uh, Fuck yeah. 
Ira, I'm more confused than I should be. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Let's see, that would be... Okay. So, uh, Ionis, what did you roll? I rolled a 14. Okay. What did you roll, Moros? A 9. Okay. What did you roll, Gesh? A 20. 20. Ooh, okay, okay. Yeah, have, having a plus 5 to initiative is really nice. Yeah. Gesh, you... Uh, yeah, you go first, Gesh. Yo! Huh? <laughs> Come on, Gesh. Let's go, Gesh! <laughs> go, okay, Gesh. It's your okay. birthday. I'm gonna party like it's your birthday. Okay, I um, I'm sorry I have to do this, guys, but this is literally my, my only weapon. I am. Um... <laughs> you son of a bitch! Don't do it. <laughs> I um, pulling out Lightbringer. Okay, you pull out Lightbringer, and as you pull it out, read me the description again. The whole description. Yes, please. Um, while it turned to this item and you draw it, it shines daylight 60 feet, bright light 60 feet, and dim light 60 feet. Any creature with a bright die, day, or bright light makes a DC 70 con save or is blinded for a minute and can repeat the save every turn. Okay. Every creature that is with uh, every creature with a daylight that is evil, undead, or a fiend can gain HP. Also, any hostage. Creature, the first time it goes or starts its turn of in daylight takes 1d10 fire or radiant damage. Okay, so you two make your con saves. Yeah, I'm sorry, it is our only weapon. Guess, as the flash goes out, what are you doing? I hate you, Gesh. <laughs> sorry, I, I do not possess other weapons. I am um, using. I you a dagger. Divine... I am um, using divine <laughs> adrenaline and run up to this mysterious creature as it wants to. As you, have... as you like, as everything goes slow around you and you rush up to him, you watch his head turn and just follow you as you're rushing up to him, just at the same pace as you. <laughs> okay. As I am before him, I'm gonna try to use my bonus action to shove him. Okay. Sure. Uh, make an athletics check. 16. <laughs> you wow. try to shove him. You take four points of bludgeoning damage. It didn't he is, know. it is like, it is like trying to elbow check him out. Okay, that's not gonna work. <laughs> and then I'm gonna unleash my... I'm gonna um, action search for this, so it's six attacks. Okay, go ahead. I have an idea. By the way, as you like try to shove him, you could see a small smile come across his face. Oh yeah, I got a single net one, and then a <laughs> nineteen, two twenty-three, so twenty-seven and a twenty-eight. Okay. Sixteen? Oh, not one? As you mm -hmm. go to strike him with the first attack, he just catches your blade between two fingers. Uh, he's going to use Retaliate. Um, immediately. That uh, is so unbelievably sad. What's your AC? 19. Okay, he hits. Only. He rolled a natural 2 on the attack. Uh, you see, he catches your blade, and he just takes you with your blade and flings you away as you rush back up. Like, you land... And you feel your knees like nearly crack under the weight of being thrown as you get back up. Do you rush back up to make those attacks or do you... Yep, okay. I rush back up. You rush back up and he just... Using his two fingers just to flex your attacks. No, it was no. not stopping. No. Not even the 28 hits? 28? No. Guys, uh, I think that... we're a little outclassed. Does that just leave it. Yes. Alright. He's. I, I will say this, he did not seem affected in any sense by your weapon. Oh wait, I would have had a 20 AC. 20 AC? Still. Yeah. 
I know. But... He has a he has a he has a plus twenty five to hit. I only... oh, you know. that's only slightly worrying. That's his unarmed strikes. Anyways, that's more worrying. He seems in a very relaxed pose as you keep coming at him. Um, he looks towards the rest of you. What did did you guys get blinded or no? Uh, well, we, I didn't. We never... did. I'll yeah, say I, I, I'll say I, I, you guys I, I, are fine. I'll say you guys are fine. Um, just because. Uh, he looks towards the rest of you, and as his action, he's going to point at the two of you who have not gone yet. As he does so, I'll say, I'll say, whoever got blinded, he points at you, and you're unblinded. Right. Anyways, uh, that ends his turn. He just seems to look at you both expectantly. I... This changes nothing. Yodas, you next. What are you doing? Wait. Uh, this changes nothing. Uh, I barrel towards him, mm -hmm. uh, and right as I get up to him, I take out the chains of restraining, and I try to put him on him. Oh. Make that like <laughs> check. <laughs> Come Does on, he get man. advantage because he's flanking with Gash? No. Oh. Ah, oh, that would have been really funny. I tried for you. Out of I character, tried. there's a cer there's a certain ability that denies this. <laughs> I got a nat one. Nat one. You go to restrain him, and you just see him like take. You see him like grab the chain. Like you're not even sure what happens. Like you go to restrain him, and you fall to the ground, restrained by the chains yourself. Oh no. And he just like he like he like sidesteps you. You're restrained. And he just like steps over you and I walks. Fall. He starts walking towards, like, past Gesh towards uh, Moros. Gesh, you don't get an attack of opportunity, unfortunately. How did we both Damn. that once? He, and that was your first rolls, too. This sucks. He, he begins to walk towards you, Moros, and he gets within five feet of you. He just stands there staring at you. Staring up at you because you're taller than him. Yeah. We are not impressing this guy. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what are you my... doing? Yeah, yeah, he's within five I, feet of you. I smirk and I reach into my backpack and pull out a dragon chest set. <laughs> uh. <laughs> sure. Wanna play? He sits down. Oh yeah. He, he like he sits he like goes to sit down, and you're like, you're gonna sit in this field of flowers and you see a chair appear behind him and a table. Now you're in a gazebo that just randomly appeared here. Hell yeah. This is quite exciting. Um, and Think I'll for yourself, I'm face, first in the, I'm face first in the dirt. Yeah, well, the Baba Yaga was going to do that to you anyways. This is just a head start. <laughs> you can and be I'll white. say this. You can be white. Uh, all right. <laughs> ah, I love this game. All right. And I'll start all playing. Right. Roll an intelligence roll? check. Please don't Great. roll another nat one, please. Look, I'm not gonna. <laughs> Hold on. Um, Look, if that's not this, that seems, one. this seems this seems pretty, pretty important. Specific. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're yeah, right. you want me to roll this in chat because of that? Yeah, I will too because this is technically significant. Okay. Even and this is just great numbers. intelligence. Straight intelligence, yes. Okay. okay Twenty plus seven. <laughs> oh my god. Let's go! Are we winning? Are, are you so winning? So remember, girls? it is contested. So they need to roll a twenty-eight or higher here, and they beat you. But if they roll a twenty-seven, you win. If they don't have a natural twenty, okay. Come on, come on. Yeah, it would come be, on. It would be this. So. Let's go! Let's go! Morals, are we winning? You see, he looks at it at the board. And you see him like, you see him about to, you see him about to like cast a spell or like do something. You see him like reach to uh, reach outwards towards the air. No, I lost fair and square. Mm -hmm. He holds his hand out for a shake. I'll shake it. You were the best opponent I've ever faced. That's a lie. <laughs> Uh, I I I can uh I can testify. Oh man, he had such a cool thing he was gonna do on his next turn. <laughs> As the field of flowers 
dissipates. You all feel the adrenaline immediately push out of your veins, and you feel calm. Can someone get these chains off me? The chains are off you and back in your back. Oh. <laughs> As you, you're back in the amphitheater, and you see walking towards the crystal, the figure approaches it once again, and you see him, like, put his hand up and usher you forward, and Moros, you're suddenly right next to him. No. Oh. Wow. What do you see? What do you want? What? How should I phrase this for your mind? You know what? No. That's a little bit too much for simply winning a chess game. And he simply, like, reaches up and, like, ushers towards him towards the crystal, and you see flying towards him a small shard of it. And he looks like he's about to hand it to you. But he's um, doing it from the side, like he's not staring at you, he's still staring at the crystal as he side hands it to you. I'll grab it? It's like, it's like a small shard, like almost a splinter. And as he hands it to you and it like floats just above your palms of your hands, anything you want is a piece of creation. <laughs> create something of your wildest dreams is, is this you giving Gesh his wish spell back no this is for Moros and Moros, this is for Moros. Yeah. you get to create any one creature or thing of your choice oh no uh, I am scared which uh. means you can create an entire new race if you wanted to Moros, I, I would have want... to make it <laughs> <laughs> I as he stares at you, so, he looks towards you, uh, I can't wait to see what you create, and he <laughs> flicks you on the forehead, and you all wake up, and that's where we're ending the session. God 